Uh, it's a real privilege to be able to talk to you about your history, oral history. Uh, so we can start from uh, where you were born. You know, I hear that you were born in Tokyo, so maybe you can tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, I was born in Tokyo in 1940. Uh, I think it was one year before the war started, because I don't remember those days. But uh, I was in Tokyo until I was 23. Yes. So you, that must be a very tumultuous time, and I wonder how what you remember about the war, and especially in 1945 when the bomb was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I uh, really don't have much, you know, vivid memory about the war because uh, I think the last year, and then also the uh, years after the war, I was shifted to. Uh, my relatives' countryside home, and uh, by the time I came back to Tokyo for the uh, elementary school, uh, the only memory was a lot of uh, American soldiers, jeeps, right, and a MacArthur's occupation. I see, and that's all I remember. And then pretty soon, as I went to the elementary school, all the larger mansions in my neighborhood was occupied by the uh, military officer's family. I uh, used to work for uh, Douglas MacArthur General. So I kind of grew up within the military kids' neighborhood I yeah, myself. And that's probably early exposure to the English, you know. I see. So that, that either helped me uh, getting a lot of uh, interest in the uh, English as well as desire to come to this country, yeah. I see, that's very good. So in fact, that was one of the questions I was going to ask, when you were exposed to English and when did you study English? Well, early days in the elementary school days, uh, as I said, you know, I was surrounded by military kids, so I was invited to their home for the uh, birthday parties, Christmas, whatever. So as I went to the middle school, I got more interested in the uh, English. And uh, luckily, I went to the private school. And uh, during the spring or summer vacation, I started going to the uh, uh, tutoring school. So that you know, further advanced my uh, interest and uh, progress in English myself. Yeah. I see. Very good. Yeah. So how many, uh, what was the size of the family? How many brothers and sisters? And what did your father do? Uh, my father was uh, uh, with the, well, my father's day was the biggest thing is the electric motor, right? He was involved in the, uh, he came out of the engineering school. He got, you know, uh, job at the, uh, then called the Fuji, Thank you, which was Fuji Electric, like uh, General Electric, sort mm -hmm. of. And he was involved. That company was big in the electric motor, motor generation, dam, you know. Yes. And he was assigned to uh, uh, Korea uh, for a while. And uh, then he was recruited to the uh, uh, Army and uh, eventually came back. But... Uh, so early days, I think I don't have much memory of my father because he was a, either in Korea, you know, for the business assignment, right. and plus the, he went to, I think, Buma, you know, for uh, battlefield. And after, he, after the war ended, he came back, re uh, resumed the job at the Fuji Electric, and he was busy. So <laughs> during the elementary school days or maybe middle school days, he was so busy, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's on the trip all the time. So I don't have much of uh, memory of spending much time with him. I know. see. And, <coughs> and I have one, one sister, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so besides uh, your memories of the early childhood, uh, what are your recollections of your school days? What were your highlights? Well, uh, 
I think it was very, all I remember was very fierce competition. Yes. You know, you gotta go through the entrance examination to middle school, high school, and college. And because of so much competition before you get into the college, you kind of slack off once you get <laughs> into the college. Yes. And, I, and then I, uh, I was in the football team. So uh, during the college, most of my time was spent in the uh, ground, okay? I see. Okay. Was baseball? Uh, uh, no, no, this is American style football. American yeah, style yeah. football. I see. Yeah, Very I was left to have back. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Very good. Um, so then you graduated from school in Tokyo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, after graduation, uh, of course, everything starts in April in Japan. And I spent April, May, June, three months in the new employee orientation. And at the end of June, all of a sudden, unexpectedly, I received a scholarship from the college in Texas. So I submitted the uh, request to resign. Of course, you know, at that time, uh, company never expected the employee uh, joined in April, tried to resign at the end of June. So it created a big hassle within yes. the company. Yes. But at the end, I think uh, the whole subject went to the president then, you know, president, and he gave me a leave of absence, so I was able to resign temporary leave of absence from Fujitsu, and then I crossed the Pacific Ocean, uh, spent the 14 days coming to Vancouver, and I spent the week Vancouver and the Seattle, and I flew into Texas I see. to start the uh, new life, you know, first time in, in the see. U.S. I yeah. see. So when was that roughly? 1963. 1963. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, in 1963, uh, you joined uh, when you went to Texas. You said. Yeah, I was in the graduate school. In the graduate first school. Year. Yeah. Okay. And that was a Texas, uh, Texas uh, University. It no, it's uh, it's called Texas TCU, DC. Texas Christian University. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But unfortunately. I believe it's in November of that year. Uh, President Kennedy was in our town. Next day he went to Dallas and he got shot. Oh, I see. And, uh, and then I, was start, I already started thinking about getting out of Texas. I see, I <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, but you know, fortunately, 1964, uh, Fujitsu was trying to recruit me back into New York. Uh, they needed somebody to take care of the uh, computer exhibit within the Japanese pavilion I see. at the New York World's Fair. Right. So I chose to, uh, I took a sort of a leave from the school and then I went to New York and start you know, preparing for the computer exhibit and I was uh, taking care of all the exhibit, you know, the people, construction, whatnot. Right. So, uh, stepping back to, uh, I, th I noticed that you went to Keio University yeah. in Tokyo. That was, uh, you graduated in business administration? That's right. And so, uh, so your career, uh, you meant to go into business management, marketing? Well, of course, you know, uh, I was majoring in the business, uh, business area. So uh, uh, I guess my father introduced me to get a job at the Fujitsu at the beginning of the computer age. And at the time, during the interview, I didn't know anything about a computer. Right. But it looks like interesting, so I took a job, yeah. Yes. So in Fujitsu, uh, were you in marketing or in? Well, after uh, spending a couple years in New York, uh, Texas and New York, I came back to Japan to resume the work at Fujitsu and I was in the uh, marketing, yeah, marketing okay. headquarters, yeah. Okay. Uh, so after, uh, how long were you at Fujitsu? Uh, 
Uh, I joined Fujitsu initially in 1963, and uh, uh, as I said, you know, I took leave of absence, and so I was away about two years. Yes. I came back in 1965, uh, mm -hmm. and I was in a domestic marketing for the computer sales. Right. Uh, and then one year after that, I was transferred to the then called Expo Department. I see. So I was handling uh, many computer-related computer product exports. I see. Yeah. Until 1969, yeah. I see. Okay. Uh, s and then, h uh, did you stay with Fujitsu till? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I was involved in the first everything for the computer export from Japan or Fujitsu. And uh, uh, 1969, uh, I was more interested in working for the computer company outside. I Japan. See. And I have a job offer from Control Data, so I took it. I moved the whole family to Minneapolis. Okay. 1969. I see. And uh, of course, you know, min Minnesota is a very cold country. Yes. First year, I was very excited living near na nature. But second year, uh, I was finally adjusting to the cold life in the cold weather. Yes. But third year, <laughs> I decided not to take it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so I was looking for a job somewhere outside of Minnesota. I see. And uh, luckily, Fujitsu offered me to come back over here as they started investing into Amdahl. I see. And they needed somebody to coordinate, you know, the relationship I see. Uh, between Amdahl and Fujitsu. So I came back here in 1972. Okay. So at uh, Control Data, uh, what were you doing within? The uh, I was uh, managing data center okay. operations okay. and uh, uh, worldwide. Okay. Uh, I think it was probably more uh, not a data center operation, but I was with the data center data center division, and I was handling all the uh, equipment logistics uh, for a while. I see. Very good. Uh, so then, uh, when you moved to um, back to Fujitsu and were managing the Amdahl uh, relationship, uh, what were what was your role there? Well, I was uh, initially a project manager uh, for. Uh, well, I, I would say initially when I moved back, uh, I didn't have any specific job, but Fujitsu was sending a lot of you know logic designers, circuit engineers. So luckily I had about a year trying to learn how the mainframe computer is, you know, designed and developed. And it was a, uh, then it was about five year cycle. Each time they spend, you know, maybe five mi $500 million for investment. So I had a lot of uh, on the job sort of uh, educational process with the logic designer, circuit engineer, you know, CAD engineer, whatnot, you know, for the first time. I see. Yeah. That's uh, since, uh, as you mentioned, you did not have a background in... No engineering in background. In background, but that is amazing that you were able to work in... Well, of course, you know, when I was in New York uh, in 1965, I spent three years, uh, three months going through the United States trying to decide which would be the next generation circuit to be used for the digital computer at Fujitsu. And I was lucky enough to accompany with the circuit engineering manager, memory engineer, and other engineers, three of them. I was more or less, I was the, the ear, mouth, you know, and leg for them. I see. So during that, you know, three months before I went back to Japan, I was able to converse with them trying to visit, you know, Texas Instrument, yes. Fairchild. Yes. And it's the beginning of the su integrated circuitry. Yes. And I was able to learn uh, many, you know, engineering knowledge then. That is very so good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think your communication skills, your language skills probably helped you in that. Uh, I was probably lucky, you know, lucky in the right spot. Yes. 
so you came across uh, Gene Amdahl uh, in while you were... Well, of course, you, the, the, the reason Fujitsu started relationship with Amdahl was there's a likewise, like person in Fujitsu who is the uh, creator of the computer group yes. in Fujitsu, Dr. Ikeda. Yes. And Dr. Ikeda and the Dr. Amdahl uh, got together at the right time and Fujitsu decided to make a huge investment to start, start up Ando. Yes. So that was probably 1971. And Dr. Ikeda himself uh, sent a few messengers when, while I was at the control data. And he himself came over to convince me I see. to move from control data to uh, Fujitsu here. I see. Uh, he, wanted to be, he wanted me to be involved in the coordination of the project. Wonderful. Yeah. So, that is a very important role that you played. Uh, I was more interested in getting out of Minnesota. <laughs> 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 um, so, how long uh, was that project for you with, uh, with the Amdahl? Well, uh, after spending uh, three years at the control data, uh, and I moved here 72, so 1972 to 1985, I was handling uh, all the manufacturing project. I, uh, I get involved in the early phase of uh, next generation computer, uh, and then into a pre-production, and then manufacturing. And at one point, uh, 1975, I believe, Fujitsu and Amdo agreed that the Fujitsu will take over the manufacturing in Japan. So I was doing all the manufacturing, engineering, information transfer yes. uh, at the beginning, and also coordination of the production plan and actual manufacturing. So I was coordinating all that, uh, and also at the end of the manufacturing, they have to ship the product. So I was doing all the export import type, you know, thing too. Right. So um, you were obviously traveling a lot. Uh, yeah. How was the family coping in terms of living here or in Japan? Well, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't think about. You know, I didn't have much time to take care of the family then, and uh, uh, I was almost traveling seven, eight times a year mm -hmm. and traveling with the Amdo engineers or Amdo, you know, production people back and forth. In 19, uh, let's see, 1978, uh, uh, I believe, uh, my kids started losing language Japanese so uh, I thought it would be better for them to be in Japan spend some time with their grandparents so I sent them back for four years I see. and I went back to Japan myself in 1979 and uh, I spent there about two years and I came back again, you know, because I was assigned back into Japan, but I was making a monthly trip over here. And then after two years, it was very tiring. Yes. So either uh, fire me out of this project <laughs> or send me back. The right. company decided to send me back again. You know. I see. So I came back in 1980. I see. So since 1980, I've been here. I see. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. So I, I continued to coordinate that, you know, uh, until 85. I was handling the computer group products. Yes. And then semiconductor because we had a uh, Gatorade products transfer from Molora to Fujitsu also at I that see. time. I see. So I was handling both the computer side and the semiconductor group side. In 1985, I was transferred to uh, semiconductor group, and uh, uh, then you know I was handling on the uh, semiconductor part. I see. 
So, uh, so there was a transition to semiconductor part. Uh, what was your role in terms of managing uh, large? Well, I was a uh, special project guy. So, uh, you know, the semiconductor side, you know, the uh, bipolar product, uh, gate array product was also a special project between Fujitsu and Amdo. Yes. And before the uh, project was transferred from Molar to Fujitsu, I was handling purchasing those Gatorade products manufactured by Molora for Amdo. Yes. And then after it was transferred to Fujitsu, I was handling all the uh, design, design files, transfer, manufacturing, and all coordination you know, through my department. Right. So that continued until, oh, I would say, late 1980s. I yeah. see. Um, so when was the transition made to Fujitsu Semiconductor or Fujitsu Microelectronics? Well, I, I was handling both computer group products and then semiconductor group products. I see. So I, had a, I carried a dual function, I see. one in the Fujitsu Microelectronics the other one is Fujitsu America, right? right? And uh, 1985, I transferred 100 percent to Fujitsu Microelectronics. I see. And I was continued to handle special projects for Amdo. I see. And 1989, or in that time frame, yes, uh, Amdo project was uh, declining. So I created the uh, advanced product division, and uh, I was not a memory guy. I was already thinking about creating products here. I know? see. So initial group I created was uh, 150 designers, advanced product division. Yeah, yes. It's more system LSI type approach, yeah. Right. And during that time, <coughs> I ran into Many interesting projects. Initially, uh, 85 time frame. Uh, I was also involved in the, you know, semiconductor trade disputes. So I was commuting to Washington D.C. all the time. I see. That was the memory problem, you know, oh the yes. trade issue. And at the same time, uh, right before 85, I got, uh, I created the joint pro development product with the company called Angon Bass yes. for the Ethernet you yes. know, controller. Yes. And uh, and then after that, you know, I ran into some microsystem. Yes. Uh, so we created the Clipper project and that helped to recruit you know more, you know, CPU type engineer, right? Yes. I think you're part of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, going back to the trade dispute uh, so you were representing Fujitsu in Washington. Uh, I was one of one of the one of the people. Uh, of course, you know, uh, semiconductor trade dispute was a government to government issue. Yes. And the industry was behind it. Yes. But uh, we hired uh, Washington lobbyist, you know, lawyers. Yes. So I was coordinating that I quite see. a bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, APD, uh, you mentioned Sun Microsystems. Uh, I know it, they were looking for uh, a foundry and a partner to manufacture or to design their uh, leading edge uh, microprocessor. And uh, you mentioned gate array technology, and I think at that time uh, Fujitsu had a, a fairly leading edge uh, mm -hmm. gate array technology. Especially, uh, Bipolar area, yeah. Yes. And then moving to, to CMOS. CMOS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, understand that the, there was an alliance uh, formed with Sun Microsystems, with Fujitsu, and uh, I think you played a fairly significant role. Well, uh, it's, uh, uh, there, there was always five to six years market timing gap and uh, one of my function was to find out the emerging technology yes and trying to come up some kind of joint development project uh, which benefit the u.s partner and fujitsu yes. as a japanese partner so i was more 
uh, more or less a as a lookout for the new technology. And by the time a new technology is uh, announced on the newspaper, it's already too late. Yes. So I was more or less like, you know, finding the seed under the ground. Yes. And that was part of it. The only thing I missed is Cisco. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, uh, you mentioned that um, APD uh, had hired a lot of people and were designing chips, but that came after the relationship with Sun. That's right, yeah. And so the Sun relationship also uh, prospered because of the... Uh, Sun, Sun Micro project is probably my second project. The first one was Ethernet with okay. Angelman Bass. Yes. And I hired some, uh, you know, logic designers and the uh, circuit engineer yes. uh, for that project. Yes. That was more or less like a start of the whole division. Right. And uh, the relationship with Sun uh, started with a gate array to manufacture the S16, uh, I understand, the first uh, microprocessor. Uh, integer unit. Integer yeah, unit, uh, yeah. yes. Which is a 20,000 gate, gate I array. I don't remember. Yes. <laughs> and I it had 4,000 uh, <laughs> units of register file. And the objective was to design a 10 MIPS processor. That was mm -hmm. and, and uh, that was the choice because LSI Logic had a 50k gateway, but that was going to come out in 1986, which was later. Well, uh, even I think uh, Sun was trying was having a difficulty finding some semi semiconductor company commit yes. the resources for developing uh, risk, you know. Yes. Uh, chip. Yes. And. Uh, Maybe I came in the right place and committed, you know, convinced Fujitsu to come in exactly. to invest the resources. Yeah. Yes, because risk was so-called risky venture at that I time see. because <laughs> CISC was the favorite yeah, of that's right. Well, predominant, yeah. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, understand that uh, when Sun came to Fujitsu for the request, um, uh, Yasufuku-san in Japan was reluctant because I think you mentioned that there was a mainframe mentality. No, uh, I think uh, Dr. Yasufuku was uh, more forthcoming than Computer Group because at that time Computer Group uh, had a peak sales period for the mainframe and they were still under the mainframe mentality. Okay. Yes. So I failed to convince Computer Group to come in to do the uh, joint Unix development. Yes. So we decided to uh, pre-start with the semiconductor project only. Yes. Right. But of course, you know, later they had to, you know, get in. You know. Yes. Right. So uh, by now you were president of uh, Fujitsu Microelectronics? No, at that time, I think uh, uh, I was initially vice president. Yes. And then uh, late 80, I became executive vice president. And late on, uh, in coming to 1990, I became a president. Mm. Right. Um, but there was, during this time, uh, I think in 1988, Sun FMI and Wind River signed an agreement to accelerate the use of Spark in real-time computing markets. Mm. Did you play a role in that? Uh, that was a difficult project because Semiconductor Group was eager to manufacture but was not really tuned into marketing itself. I see. And uh, somehow that have to be transferred to Fujitsu Computer Group. You know, Computer Group finally realized the importance of the workstation. And I think uh, uh, after 1990, they came in to work with the Sun, you know, the Unix Corporation, right. workstation, you know, cooperation. Right. Yeah. Uh, Fujitsu also signed uh, a five-year OEM agreement to market Sun workstations in Japan, um, which uh, of course, helped Sun uh, in their growth in the workstation market. In Japan, yeah. In Japan. Mm -hmm. Was that an exclusive agreement or was this... Uh, uh, by that time, I was not 
quite involved I see. in because there was a deal between the computer group and the Sun Micro, so okay. I was not directly involved. Okay. Yeah. Well, what initially, I spent a lot of time convincing Fujitsu management to get involved with the Sun Micro, especially in the workstation. Yes. So, in terms of um, uh, Spark International, mm -hmm. were you also part of that uh, discussion? And uh, I think uh, initially yes, but I, uh, uh, I, I believe a computer group representative probably participated more in that okay. area. Yeah. Okay. Especially the architectural design right. area. Yeah. So, for the computer group, were there a different uh, communication media? You were not involved with that, or you were Well, of course, you know, I was 100% FMI side now. Yes. So, I have less dealing with the computer group. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, in terms of the FMI Sun Alliance, um, that extended beyond just the Silicon Valley. There were many other uh, factors. Can you well, initially we had the exclusive marketing right for the chip. Yes. But I think we failed to implement, you know, perfectly there. Yes. And later on, the when, the, when the workstation project came over, I think a computer group took over that relationship. Yeah. Right. So, were in terms of development APD, there was the embedded processors and the Sparklight. Um, well, I think a byproduct from Ethernet project and then Clipper yes. Spark project. Yes. We created byproduct around it. Yeah. Yes. So some of those products uh, were meant for uh, applications such as cameras and mm -hmm. uh, other embedded, yeah. embedded That's right. designs. So that was uh, pretty much planned by your group. By your yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was interesting, interested in uh, transforming, yes. you know, Semconda Group from just a simple memory product to more, you know, c complexity yes. product. Yes. And especially after we fail acquiring Fairchild, yes. I was more eager to transfer, yes. transform them to more system level LSI. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I remember reading a lot about the acquisition attempt by Fujitsu for Fairchild. Um, were you involved in that as well? Well, I initi initiated the uh, okay. initial kickstart yes. with the president of Fairchild then. Yes. And we had many behind the scene negotiation, but we were probably naive politically. I see. Uh, because it was at the time of the uh, you know, semiconductor dispute going on. Yes. And uh, we were a little bit politically naive, and we were ready to almost uh, scratch off the Fujitsu and then join company would be under Fairchild name. Right. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't materialize. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there was also investment in VIA technologies. Um, which technology? Via VIA, VIA Technologies, the company VIA that there was uh, Fujitsu uh, invested like twenty five percent into VIA Technologies. Um, I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah. So I remember helping them when I was uh, at I Fujitsu. Okay. And, and then of course ICL. Uh, this is again the computer group. That yeah, ICL is strictly computer group. Okay. Yes. Uh, what about HAL Computer? Well, I. Uh, that one I also did the kickstart. Yes. Uh, I met with the Andy Heller. Yes. And uh, convinced uh, President of Fujitsu as well as Dr. Suku to invest some, you know, startup money. And we, sh how is the uh, uh, Andy Heller's company? Yes. And we sent a lot of logic engineers. And sort of, you know, recreation of, you know, Amdo type project. Yes. Yeah. I was actually involved in that. Oh, if is that right? If oh you okay. remember, we had a meeting in Tokyo with Andy Heller, yourself, and me. Is that talking right? about oh, okay. some uh, yeah. library sorry. development. I'm getting too old. <laughs> 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 no, I, that was very nice. Okay. In fact, many of the engineers from that company, we were, were hired at Sun later on. So. Well, so many came from IBM. From IBM, you know, yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, I also noticed that you had um, you went to Harvard Business School uh, well, advanced that management was a, program. You know, company was uh, kind enough to sponsor me for this. You know, the uh, executive MBA type program. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was during the time when you were president. Uh, uh, no, I uh, retired. I see. Uh, Nineteen. 97, I right. believe. Yes. And I became a part of the corporate planning group, but I chose to stay here. I see. And at the same time, I was the special advisor to the president, Fujitsu. Yes. Promoting new technologies, new investment. Yeah. So uh, my assignment is, you know, invest corporate money into the venture capital fund as well as the business. Yeah. Yes. And then also uh, Stanford um, Graduate <laughs> Business School. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I did some executive courses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so how long uh, uh, were you involved in that activity as a special assistant? And uh, 1997 to 2005. Okay. When I retired. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, were any exciting projects started during that time, or any? Well, last project I uh, tried to kickstart was the cooperation with the park. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the days are becoming more ubiquitous, you know, computing. Yes. And uh, that was my last project with, project with the Fujitsu. And after 2005, I retired, so I kind of detached myself out of business completely. I've been retired nine years. Yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, you've certainly been involved in many exciting and pioneering activities. Um, looking back, what were uh, some key highlights that, that you remember as pleasant memories? Well, I think uh, many years of coordination, you know, between Fujitsu and Amdo, that was the uh, coming up with the compatible IBM machine. And uh, in terms of uh, logic design, circuit design, manufacturing engineering, and I was able to learn quite a bit from that process. And if I come up with the one project I was most impressed was the dealing with all the Ando engineers, yeah, in those days. Yes, yes. And uh, if you uh, look at Fujitsu now, uh, since you were involved with the company for so long, uh, where does the company stand today in terms of innovation and in terms of future? To uh, tell you the truth, I have no knowledge. Yes. Uh, after I retired, you know, I'm completely detached with the industry. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> decided to go on my own hobby area. So yes. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I don't have any share of the Fujitsu. Okay. So, uh, so the only thing I associate with the Fujitsu right now is once a year they have a uh, uh, all boys club. I see. Okay, company sponsors the sort of banquet. Right. So I meet with all the faces right. and that's about it. Right. And we talk about old days. Right. We don't talk about the future. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that is fine. There's no problem. Yeah. Uh, what is your personal assessment of um, Japan? You know, where is Japan today in terms of? Uh, Japan, in my view, is probably having a hard time to transform to a new age. And uh, I think they're fighting with this, you know, byproduct of globalization. Yes. And uh, declining population. Yes. And... Uh, of course, you know, government debts issue, whatever. Yes. So uh, I think they are right now in the many planning stage and uh, to revitalize the country. Yeah. Yes. So uh, there's also population is aging. There are fewer younger people. Are the younger people uh, looking at new ways to uh, transform the society? What would be your assessment? Uh, I hope so. Yes. You know, I don't have much, you know, 
uh, association with the younger generation. Yes. But judging from what I read, I think a new breed of young generation should come up, you know. Yes. I know that uh, entrepreneurship uh, and new ideas was your specialty. You were really looking at new ideas. No, I guess uh, my specialty would be uh, think outside of box yes. and uh, be open to the new idea, new yes. technology, yes. and try to connect it you know, with uh, Fujitsu. Yes. That was my sort of yes. special project mentality. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend the young people in Japan to be thinking that way? Well, I think uh, young generation, uh, unfortunately, they are not so eager to work outside of Japan these days for some reason. They should venture out more. Yes. Uh, and uh, as a uh, although it's a small population, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, Japanese startup uh, businesses done in Silicon Valley, and but still a very, very uh, minor percentage. Yes. And they should, uh, government should probably try to help uh, promoting that one, you know. Yeah, it's not happening like uh, Chinese or Indian engineers. Yes. But I think it's a small portion of the Japanese engineer uh, starting company here. Yes, yes. Uh, any other closing thoughts? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm a little, my closing phase is I'm a little bit embarrassed to be in the interview here today. <laughs> <laughs> I know you should not be. <laughs> No, I, I think you know, myself, I, you know, I did, I did coordinate or kickstart many projects, but I, I don't know how much co contribution I made to this industry. <laughs> you have made a lot of contribution, Katshiba-san, and uh, you should be proud of that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.